Welcome to this Zentangle Quickie. My name is Heather Hartwick Gladden. I'm a certified Zentangle teacher. And today we're going to take a look at the Tangle Finks from CZT Carla Duran. I keep seeing, I kept seeing this Tangle. Let's see, when did they, when did uh, Linda put this on? Oh, 2021. So it's not been on necessarily that long, not as long as, as some others, but it keeps popping up in uh, whenever I go look at Tangle Pattern. So I'll, I thought, I'm going to give this one a go and we'll just see. So that's what we're going to do. All right. I did flip up the steps. And so Carla, if you ever watch this, um, I hope that's okay. <laughs> you can do, either, you know, if you can flip uh, step one and two uh, if you need to, but I found that putting step two first helped me in doing it. And okay, I'm going to try to draw a big one here. Uh, so I'm going to start off with a squished orb, <laughs> or, you know, an ovalish type of shape. And then somewhere in the, uh, you know, towards the center, like this, we're going to, you know, put an orb, but we're going to, you know, fill it all the way in. And so Carla had this first, then the orb. Like I said, whichever way works for you. And for me, well, and you'll show, I'll show you where, how I was playing with this, um, inspired by the gorgeous samples on, um, on the link. You'll see for more inspiration, that's why it's there. Um, so do take a look uh, for ways to use this one. Um, so I, I was giving that a try and I was like, I needed to place the orb or the, yeah, the, the oval first. Anyway, from here, if you've done the tangle, gosh, zinger, sprinkle, uh, I think owl line. There's a, there's a bunch of them that have these, what, what I was calling hats. Oh, and you know what? Just occurred to me. I'm going to draw this upside down. Or I'm going to draw it sideways. Let's, let's try it sideways. I was having trouble with this step. And um, it's not going to be perfect, but that's okay. It's untangled, right? So we're just going to do like little C-shape curve lines. And this is where you can have fun with it and have them, uh, you know, gradually get smaller. Mine are ending up, well, no, that one isn't too bad. Mine are ending up looking a little bit squared. And, you know, you can just make this go as, you know, as small as you want. Okay. Oh, I forgot a step. Darn it. Okay, flipping. Never mind this. I'm just kidding. You can do these ones out of order. Um, this one, not necessarily, because you do have to have these two to, to get things started. But after doing, yeah, gosh, I was so I, I was so um, concerned about doing this part, so my brain jumped ahead. All right. Up here, we're going to, I'm like, why does it look so naked? That's why. So we're just going to put some, some curve lines up there at the top. Kind of looks like a like a Sunday top or something. Um, but we'll, we'll do it again because that way we'll have a nice little, not just one sitting here. So again, I found it easiest to start with the oval because that way you could kind of place the oval wherever you want. Then put in the filled in orb. And you know what? I This I had the best luck with. I, and it's funny how I do this and then I think of it. Not while I'm playing around with it. Nah. Some of mine ended up going, for me, for what I was envisioning, too small, too fast. And actually, I did want these to kind of connect a little. But that's it. Okay, let's try this one maybe at more of an angle. Oops. I see, you know, and I'm so concerned about all of that, I forget about the other things. Now let's do it in order. That, that. I'm going to try it the other way. Because you could also, you know, work to kind of bend them, and you would do that by having put maybe one side smaller, larger than the others, like that. Yeah, so we could kind of get it to... To turn but even at there it's still you know <laughs> well it just looks like a trio <laughs> here's how I was playing oh you know what? let me show you shading really quick before I show you that 
Um, for shading, all that I found to do, and I think this worked out great because it also hides. Well, this one is just gorgeous. How did I get those lines so nicely fit together? Then, <laughs> and then it, it, you know, then it does something different. So putting some graphite on each side of that, and because there's not a lot of room, I'm doing more of a, I call it a scooch. <laughs> or like I could go this, oh no, actually, here's the interesting. I think this way I get more of a narrow gradient, or if I'm going this way, I have, I'm using more of that surface. So I'm gonna stay with the scooch. Yeah, and then, oh, I'm going to put, let's see, I'll put it on the inside of here, or maybe kind of, kind of on the line, then I can decide. Let's try the first one. Yeah, yeah. Although I think I like it, oh, some, we'll put a little both ways. We'll go a little darker right here, right in the center. Oh, yeah. So that it looks like it's kind of a something separate. Ah. <laughs> As I'm trying to grab them, they're flipping out of my reach. Like fishes out of water. <laughs> yeah. You know, and actually, I'm going to just put a little bit, I'm using what's left on my tortillon, just up on the sides a little bit. Oh, yeah, make it look a little rounded. That helps. Yeah. All right. So in, again, the For More Inspiration link, um, Carla used this. Why is it going, it's going dim all of a sudden. Okay. Um, or dark. <clears throat> She used it as a, like a seed pod, and, and hers is way more gorgeous. So take a look at that for that reason. But I thought, well, I'm just going give it, to give it a shot with my fancy fescue uh, slash opus thorn um, things. And, um, but she has it with like uh, the henna drum and some other leafy type shapes. Really, really pretty. And it does look like a seed pod. Mine look kind of like caterpillars from outer space or something like that so <laughs> but I wanted to give this one a try again because it kept popping up and it's one that I just you know every once in a while it's nice to try something that your mind doesn't just go oh I have to learn how to do that one this is one I'm like hmm well it's interesting Meh. but I like it and I could see how it could be well it could be used as a critter or you know as a you know, as a, like a seed pod, but do take a look. So that way you can find some other neat ways to look at it. Um, and maybe having something coming out of it is key. Like she kind of did that. Well, let's, we'll, we'll play with, uh, let's play with this one. Just because it just seems so barren. Let's do. And actually the thing that she did, it looks like, oh, and I, I think it's another tangle and I'm not, thinking the name of it. I know I've seen it, but it's still that same shape. Yeah, see, it'll just look like a, like she said, like a seed pod. Ha! Ah, you know what? <laughs> there is just something magical about adding things. So if you ever just, you're not really caring for something that you did. See, what can you add? <laughs> and yeah, and I like them kind of coming out the top where the, in, in here, I just kind of have them stuck. Because, well, I was, like I said, I was just taking a look there at what um, Carla had done. Oops. Well, that was a little sloppy, but that's okay. Ha! <laughs> All right, now it looks cute. Oh, and then you could do, all right, let's, uh, <laughs> oh, there's a 
always fun to be had with the tangle. Always, always fun. Does need to have something kind of hanging out of here, doesn't it? You know, and it, it's a fun exercise in letting the tangle speak to you. <laughs> it sounds goofy, but, you know, you just kind of take a look. And if you're looking with the thought in mind of, ha, huh, how can I make this? I don't know. What, what can I add? And it's just fun to uh, to open up your brain, open up my brain, really talking to myself, and just see where it takes you. It's a great exercise. That's that's why um, I know in uh, Rick and Maria's books they talk about the benefits of Zentangle. One of them is unblocking creativity, and this is how it's done. We think, oh no, there, you know, that's why there's no such thing as a mistake in Zentangle, because there isn't. There's always an opportunity to find something else that you can do to make you go, yeah, okay, I kind of dig that. That's all right. I like it. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this. <laughs> this was more than just learning how to do binks. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, would love to have you click like. Feel free to share it, leave comments. And if you liked it enough to see more, would love to have you be a subscriber to the channel. Uh, I already mentioned the description section. I always I do my own version of the step out and then link to the originator of the tangle in right where it says for more inspiration. Below that, ways to connect with me. Uh, the link to my website where you can find uh, some tangles and categories. Also, I've been, do I've been doing a daily tangle for a really long time. Uh, so you'll see that list. You can subscribe to my blog and you'll get those when I send them out. As well as... Um, like I said, oh yeah, uh, you can see the classes that I do. I do a lot of free. Uh, I have workshop or workshops, sessions. I like to call them sessions. Every uh, every Thursday, my time depends on where you're at. Um, and uh, I do two sessions. We do the same tangle every uh, both sessions on the same day, and uh, see how much fun we can have with them. It's a blast. Um, also, if you happen to be on Facebook and would like to. Uh, to join in conversation and sharing of tangles with fellow tangle addicts. We'd love to have you join us. Uh, that link is there. It's a private group and there are, um, I have four statements, but two required questions in order to gain entry into the group. So just so that way you know. All right, with that, thanks again so much for watching and I wish you happy tangling.